So here's a tough question for you. Would you marry you? Take a second to think about it. If you were on a date with yourself, would you want a second date? I mean, that's not fair. We all put on airs for that first date, right? But knowing you, as you do, would you want to spend the rest of your life with you if you were, I mean, you already have to, but if you were somebody else? Now, if your answer is, well, hell yeah, congratulations. You've reached some kind of Zen nirvana and probably have your life together better than 99% of us. But if the answer is a hesitant, maybe, <laughs> or an outright, no way, well, that's a problem. Here's the thing. You should be asking yourself this question, whether you're single, you're dating, or you're even 20 years into marriage. Because guess what? People change. And if you haven't checked in on who you've become recently, well, it's probably time to do that. And look, I'm definitely not here to tell you how to live your life. Well, I guess I'm here to give some suggestions. <laughs> but if you wouldn't marry yourself, why the hell would anyone else want to? And if you've been married for decades, well, maybe it's time to ask yourself, would I still marry me today? And that's what we're going to dig into in this episode of Zen Sandwich. You're listening to Zen Sandwich, a podcast for the independent mind and anyone who embraces life despite its absurdities. Join former attorney and professor turned Japanese papermaker Mark Reed each week as he talks with creative, inspiring, and influential people, or as he shares his own research to help make your world a little better today than it was yesterday. Imagine you're looking into the mirror, but instead of just seeing your reflection, you're seeing yourself the way someone else would like you're meeting you for the first time. Now ask yourself, would I hang out with this person? Would I want to spend the rest of my life with them? Here's the thing. We're all pretty good at fooling ourselves. We tell ourselves, I mean, some of us do, hey, man, I'm awesome. We're awesome. Or at least we say, you know, I'm good enough. I'm good enough. And that's, it's healthy <laughs> to have confidence and to believe in yourself that, you're awesome, that you're good enough. You, look, listen, if you're listening to Zen Sandwich, you are awesome. But facing the uncomfortable truth takes actual effort. And the uncomfortable truth is this. you got to be honest about your own bullshit. Are you the kind of person who listens when someone's talking? Or do you zone out and start mentally or even actually scrolling Instagram? Instagram is horrible. Please don't do that. Do you handle stress like a Zen monk? I mean, I don't, but, you know, do you? Or do you explode like a toddler on Red Bull? Are you kind and supportive? Or are you kind of selfish when things don't go your way? Yeah, it's not fun looking at yourself this way. But if you don't, you'll keep carrying around all those blind spots. You'll keep wondering why your relationships feel like dumpster fires. Here's your task. Really take a hard look at how you treat people. And I'm not talking about your best moments when you're feeling all compassionate and generous. I mean, when you're tired, pissed off, stressed, you've had a bad day. How do you treat people closest to you then? That's the real test. And look, of course, it's not about being perfect. Shocker, you're never going to be perfect. Me neither. But. If you wouldn't want to deal with your own habits and quirks day in and day out, how could you reasonably expect someone else to? It's about becoming aware of what you bring to the table and, you know, making sure it's not just dirty dishes and emotional baggage. Here's the deal. Would you respect you? Would you trust you? If the answer is maybe, well, Okay, you're like most of us. But if the answer is a straight up, no, I don't, I don't think I would respect me. I don't think I would trust me. Then it's time to start figuring out why. 
Because you can't expect a healthy relationship if you wouldn't even want a relationship with yourself. All right. So you've looked in the metaphorical mirror, or maybe you went and actually did uh, a real one. (laughs) Uh, And maybe you didn't like everything you saw. Good. That's a good thing. You just took the red pill when you've been hooked on the blue one. If you're a fan of the Matrix, you know what I'm talking about. That's the first step. But here's the thing. Just knowing that maybe you're a bit of a mess or some aspects of you are a little bit messy, uh, it, it, that doesn't fix anything yet. Now it's time to use that awareness to actually do something about it. If you wouldn't marry you right now, and I don't freak out. A lot of people come to that conclusion. Instead of wallowing in a pool of self-pity, let's talk about how you can turn this into a blueprint for becoming the kind of person you would want to marry. The kind of person you do want to be. So first off, ask yourself, what are the qualities I value in a partner? Patience. Kindness. The ability to sit through a two-hour movie without checking their phone every five minutes. Whatever it is, you've got to start embodying those qualities yourself. If you want someone who's emotionally available, you need to be emotionally available. If you want someone who's supportive and understanding, you need to be supportive and understanding. This isn't rocket science, of course, but it's amazing how many people think they could act like an emotional wreck and still expect their partner to have their shit together. Relationships don't work like that. You get what you give. So if you wouldn't want to be around your own behavior, why would anyone else? Maybe some of you are thinking, yeah, okay, Mark, but you said none of us are perfect. What about compromise? What what about just finding someone who accepts me for who I am? That's great and all, but here's the truth. No one wants to admit, even in the healthiest relationships, you should always be looking to improve yourself. Always. You should be striving to be a better version of you, the best version of you. Not because your partner demands it, but because you owe it to yourself. Here's a little secret. Improving yourself isn't just good about your relationships. This episode's really not about relationships. It's good for you. It's about you becoming the person you want to be and using this would I marry me as a standard for becoming who you want to become. You want to feel more confident, want to actually enjoy being around yourself instead of needing constant distractions to avoid the gaping void of your own insecurities. (laughs) Start working on the areas where you know you suck. Look, I'm, I'm looking in the mirror myself. I'm saying I suck. I'm saying we all suck in some way. Nobody's perfect. Maybe that means learning how to communicate like an adult instead of bottling everything up until you explode over who left the cap off the toothpaste. Maybe it means getting your emotional baggage sorted out so you're not dumping it on people around you. Whatever it is, make a plan and start small. Now that goes for everything, right? Everything in life. Starting a business, getting your relationships in order, uh, getting your finances in order. Start small and build it. No one becomes Buddha overnight, so don't try to overhaul your entire personality in one go. Pick one thing. Maybe you work on being more patient. Maybe you stop avoiding difficult conversations and go from there. The point is you're using this would I marry me as a standard, not as a guilt trip. You're using it as a guidepost. And if there's stuff you don't like about you, fix it. Not for anyone else, but for you. Because at the end of the day, the only person you're truly stuck with forever is you. Now, let's say you've been married for a while already. You might be thinking, "Eh, Mark, I don't have to worry about this. I'm already married. I'm relatively happily married. Like, you've been together long enough to finish each other's sentences, argue about the same three things on repeat. You're in the, look, we've settled phase. Well, here's the truth, and you know it. People change a lot, and not always in the ways you expect. The person you married 5, 10, 20 years ago, they're not the same person anymore. Guess what? Neither are you. That's why the would I marry me question doesn't just apply to the single folks or people out there dating. 
you need to be asking this even if you've been married since the Clinton administration. Because here's the uncomfortable reality. Marriages don't fail because people fall out of love. They fail because people stop checking in with themselves and each other. They assume that since they're married, they've crossed some finish line. In reality, relationships are more like marathons. If you're not pacing yourself, you're going to burn out. So take a minute and ask yourself, would I still marry me today, right now? Not the version of you when you said I do, but the person you've become. Would you? Be honest. Are you the kind of partner you'd want to be with after a decade of shared laundry, financial stress, and weird health problems that no one warned you about? <laughs> People evolve. We all have new goals, new fears, new triggers. A lot of people don't want to admit they've changed because change, it's scary. It can be. It's perfectly okay to change your mind, to evolve. But if you don't acknowledge these changes, both in yourself and in your relationships, you end up living in this weird version of your life that doesn't fit anymore. So how do you deal with this? By constantly revisiting the question. You got to ask yourself, am I still someone I'd want to spend time with? Am I still growing? Am I still putting in the effort to be a good partner? And if you're coasting on autopilot, maybe it's time to wake up. Marriages don't survive because of some magical love thing. They survive because people are willing to put in the work on themselves first and then on the relationship. If you wouldn't still marry you, that's a red flag. Don't panic or file for divorce. It just means you need to take a hard look at who you've become and what you're bringing to the table now. Okay, here's your five minutes in. You don't need to spend the next six months journaling about your feelings or meditating in a cave to figure out if you'd marry yourself. But just do this. One, write down three qualities you want in a partner. And I don't care what they are. That's, this is up to you. Honesty, compassion, a sense of humor, whatever floats your boat. Just make sure these are qualities that really matter to you in a long-term relationship and not superficial crap like good hair or they must like dogs. <laughs> okay, number two, rate yourself on those qualities. Be brutally honest. Judge yourself. Are you as patient as you'd want your partner to be? Are you as supportive? Are you as fun to be around? Three, pick one area to improve, just one. You don't need to turn your life upside down overnight. Maybe you need to work on being a better listener. Maybe you realize you've been kind of selfish lately and it's time to change that. Whatever it is, commit to improving that one thing over the next month. Then next month, rinse and repeat. This isn't a one and done thing. Just like you wouldn't expect your body to stay fit forever after one workout, you can't expect your relationship or yourself to stay healthy without constant attention. Keep coming back to this question. Would you still marry you? And use it as your check-in to stay on track. Here's the bottom line. None of us are perfect. We all have flaws, bad habits, moments where we're just not that great to be around. Myself included. But if you can get in the habit of checking in with yourself, holding yourself to the same standard you'd want in a partner and making small improvements over time, hey, you're already way ahead of the game. Keep it simple. Keep it real. And if you wouldn't marry you right now, figure out what you need to change and go do it. All right, that's it. Hopefully you've gotten some clarity, maybe even a little motivation to stop coasting and start taking ownership of your relationships, starting with the one you have with yourself. Remember, you don't have to be perfect, but you do need to be real. You need to be honest with yourself. If you like this episode and you want to support the show, consider making a donation. I know everybody's asking for your bucks these days, but uh, I could always use the help to keep the show going. Uh, you can do that right where you're listening on Apple or Spotify. There should be a sponsor this podcaster button. Or if you're listening on YouTube, uh, I don't think there's a button there. So you might want to head over to PayPal and use the email address for this show. That's zensamich at gmail.com as the recipient. 
It's that easy peasy Japanese on PayPal. Just who are you sending it to? Zensamich at gmail.com. And trust me, it goes in there. Uh, and I appreciate every bit of support. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate every one of you who takes the time to listen. Life's messy. People are messy. But the most important thing is remember always, just breathe. Don't forget to breathe.